Hi guys and welcome in the next video. Let's continue today our KUKA tutorial uh, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about digital inputs and outputs uh, in KUKA today. There is a quite a big difference uh, between how the way how do we set up uh, Final, for example, and KUKA inputs and outputs. I wanted to show you that today. I wanted to show you how to trigger those outputs, uh, how to look for them and so on and so on. So I think it's going to be an interesting video. So like always guys, let's get started. Five, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. All right. So first, uh, what is a digital input and output? So basically it's a bit that can take a state of zero or one, where zero is turned off, one is the bit is high, and the output or input is on. Now, in most of the robots, you're going to use the digital inputs and outputs as your uh, base way to communicating with the PLC or the devices. So I think it's worth knowing how they work and where to look for them. So in the KUKA robots, uh, we can see the input and outputs uh, in the uh, IO display right here. And uh, you can see that there are a few things that you want to uh, take a look at, which is uh, the number of the I.O. Then uh, you have something where it will tell you if it's a system output or is a regular output, uh, but we're going to go through the details maybe a little bit later on. Then you have the name, uh, you have the value, and the value is indicated by a, a kind of a LED, where it can take a state of uh, zero when it's off, or it will turn on uh, and light up, that means the input or output is high and has a value of 1. So this is the way how you can look up, uh, the easiest way to look up at your inputs and outputs uh, on your uh, KCP. Now, uh, what about the program? So in the programs you can also use inputs and outputs, of course. You can wait for inputs, uh, you can turn on outputs, turn off outputs and so on and so on. We're going to play with logic a little bit later. Uh, today, I'm going to show you just how to uh, use those inputs and wait, uh, use those outputs and wait for inputs uh, in the program. There is one main thing that you need to know. So there are two ways of kind of waiting or setting up the inputs and outputs. One is uh, executing it with a robot stopping at the point where the input or output is going to be triggered. And the second one is uh, with a continuous motion where the robot is going to trigger input uh, or wait for uh, uh, trigger output or wait for input and it will continue the motion if possible. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this on the exercises but I want you to, to keep in mind uh, that for example in FANUC uh, if you're waiting for an input the robot will uh, always wait. In here you kind of can do it uh, on the fly. Uh, well, the guys will say, well, Fanuc will do it on the fly as well. Yes, it will do, uh, but the way how you set it up is different in KUKA and Fanuc. That's why I wanted to uh, mention it in here, because in Fanuc we don't uh, specify that on the uh, execution of the logic, but on the point execution, where we use fine or continuous. In here we are using uh, also kind of fine, that's basically nothing, or continuous on the input or output, that will allow the robots just to flow through the program. So how that works is basically the robot is always taking a look a few steps ahead uh, with its program and when you have an input or output uh, that you will wait for or trigger, he'll look forward if there is a wait for example and if that condition is met and you have the uh, wait command as a continuous, basically he, the robot will just continuously flow through the program like nothing ever happened. If you're going to wait for an input and that input is going to be low, low that means zero, Basically, the robot is going to go through there and stop and wait for the input to be triggered. But again, we'll talk about more in the exercises. Probably you're going to ask me, okay, but where does the inputs and outputs come from? So, as you remember probably from the FANUC, you can see everything on the teach pendant. Unfortunately, in the KUKA robot, you're not able to tell everything from the KCP. You need to look into your work visual projects. So, if you want to know the mapping, if you want to change the mapping, uh, if you want to map new outputs, map new devices, everything has to be done through work visual. So you got to download the project, change it, upload. This way you're uh, mapping your IOs. 
we're not going to go through that today. I'll show you where to find those, but the mapping itself uh, we're going to take care of in uh, future videos. All right. Uh, then uh, in the end, I'm going just to show you the program execution with inputs and outputs, and all of that is going to uh, summarize our I.O. One more thing that's very important. Uh, you can also in KUKA robots assign a, a name to an input and, or output. And instead of waiting for, uh, let's like say, digital input 25, you can wait for a name that you will assign to the signal. And I'm going to show you how that looks on a program so you get an idea of that. So let's get to the exercises. Welcome to the exercises. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the digital uh, inputs and outputs in KUKA robots. So first of all, maybe let me show you where those are located. So in order to get to digital input and outputs, you want to hit the KUKA robot icon and then you want to go to display. Then you want to navigate to input outputs and in here uh, you have your inputs and outputs. Today we're going to focus on digital inputs and outputs. So you want to click digital IO. And that will open additional window where you can uh, navigate through your inputs and your outputs. Now, uh, what's important? You cannot simulate inputs in KUKA robot. There is a different way of simulating. So for you that work with FANUC, uh, there is no really a uh, SIM button that you can use, even though you can see it here in most of the robots, you won't see it. Uh, there is a different way how to do it. And I will show you that in a second when we're going to execute the program. Uh, and the same goes for the outputs. How do we change the state of an output? Because we can change state of an input. That's quite easy. So you're going to navigate to any output that you want to uh, change the state of. And on the right hand side, you can see a value. As you click it, you are changing the value of an output. As, I, as you can see, uh, the LED turned on, indicating that the input output is high. The same will come for the input. So whenever there will be incoming input and it's going to be high, well, in my case, I can do that. Uh, you will see that the output is going to turn on high. If you want to turn it off, you simply click one more time and then uh, the output will go low. How do you name the output? As you can see, there's also an uh, uh, icon called name. So you want to click name and you can put whatever you want. You can name it output four. And then you click OK and the name is changed. There is also a faster way how you can rename all of the inputs and outputs. And I'll be showing that uh, in a later video. However, if you want to just name a single input or a single output, that's how you do it. Uh, then you also have a very useful uh, button called go to and that allow you, allows you to go to any output that you want. So you're just simply going to click go to and let's say that I want to go to out output five. You hit enter and the robot will navigate to output five. The same goes for the inputs. OK, so that will be pretty much it. Uh, now you ask me, well, how do I know where the inputs and outputs are coming from? So in KUKA robots, it is not as easy to find out uh, like in FANUC because in order for you to see where everything comes from and where everything is mapped to, you need to use work visual. So I'm not going to go in details today about it. Uh, I'm going to do additional video where I will show you basically uh, how are we mapping inputs and outputs on KUKA. For now, let's see how do we use them in our programs. So I created a, a simple program in here called test. Let's select it. Uh, so basically that's a, just a default KUKA program where we have our init line, we have our home positions, and that's pretty much it. Now let's add a movement point to it and let's add a, a logic to turn on output and wait for input. So in order to do that, uh, first of all, I'm going to add a few lines. So let's add a few lines. Uh, I'm logged in as an expert, guys. Uh, if you want to add the lines, you need to be logged in as an expert. For you, that you, uh, for those who don't remember, you want to hit on the robot icon. You want to go to configuration. 
user group and log in as an expert. Okay, so uh, we've added our lines. Now let's add, uh, let's move the robot somewhere. So I'm going to enable the robot, just jog it virtually guys. Uh, and then I'm going to add a point. Okay. Uh, and let's toggle some inputs and outputs. So let's go to line number four. And in line number four, I'm going to insert an uh, output. So I want to trigger an output. So you want to go to comment, then you want to go to logic and out. And there are quite a few ways how you can send an output. Uh, let's focus only on just turning them on and off today. For you, probably you're going to use pools a lot. So pools basically will just uh, turn it on for some certain time and then turn it back off. So let's uh, click out. And as you can see, automatically uh, we have a kind of a default way how to set it up. So you simply want to say which output do we want. Let's use the number four, the one that we re renamed. Uh, as you can see, the name will show up here. Then uh, the state, do we want to turn it on or off? Let's turn it on. And there is one more option, which is uh, continuous or kind of fine. And let me talk about this, about this in a second. Let's leave it like this right now. And you want to hit comment. Okay. All right. And there you go. You will just turn on, uh, you're going to turn on output four. Uh, to true, let me see right here uh, as when you execute the line. So let's do that. Let's uh, go to the beginning of our program. Let's start it up. Okay, and let's go. As you can see, as we pass uh, line the line with the logic, our output for turned on. Let's turn it off now. So let's change the comment. So you want to navigate, you want to select the block, you want to cl click change and you want to change the state to false. You want to do command OK. And let's say we want to start from this line. And as you execute, the output will turn off because we are changing the state to false. Uh, there is a little bit more complex into adding an input and outputs because in Kukarobot you can also define your inputs and outputs as a uh, uh, variable per se, so you can give it a name. And then instead of using out, you can just use uh, that name to change it to true or false. Uh, we're not going to do that today, uh, but just so you know, there is an option li like this uh, and you can do it. Okay, now let's uh, see how do we wait for an input. So let's select uh, that line and comments, logic, wait for, and a default inline comment shows up. And now you basically choose. We want to wait for an input. Let's wait for the same one. Let's wait for input number four. And uh, there is also option of waiting not for input four, or you can put a not in here. And the same, we can do fine or continuous. And that I will show in a second. So you want to hit command, okay? And we have our wait line defined uh, in here. Okay, so let's execute the whole program. It starts from the beginning. Okay, we are at the beginning and so let's go. So we turn off our output for, but as you can see, there was a message in here that we're going to get in in a second. And that's what I told you. In KUKA robots, there is, you cannot simulate uh, an input on the pendant in here. The only way how you how to do it is whenever you get to the uh, wait line, there there will be a simulate button when you are in T1 that you can push and it's going to simulate and the robot will continue. So as you can see, we're waiting for input four. As soon as I click simulate, the robot will continue into the next line and uh, execute the program until the end. Now the message. As you can see, we have two messages. One is sequence of instruction that cannot be approximated. We have our program and where it is located and approximate positioning not possible. What does this mean, guys? Let's clear this and let's take a look at our code. So I told you that in our logic, we can have a fine state or continuous state. Why does it matter? 
Uh, it matters because when we have our movements, there is also a continuous motion or a fine motion, depending on what we are going to choose. As a moment of right now, as you can see, our movement is set to continuous, but both of our logic are set to fine. That means the robot say, hey, I don't like it because I want to approximate that point, but I cannot approximate it because the next line is saying that I have to wait. So what's going to happen basically, that point is going to work as a fine motion because he has to wait for this when he reach that point. Okay, so let's change that. Let's click change. First of all, uh, so I don't need to simulate, let's change this to a not this way. We always will just go through that. I don't need to hit the simulate button and let's change it to continuous. Now, as you can see, both our point and the logic are continuous. That means the robot doesn't need to wait in that point anymore. If that logic will be true, it will just continue uh, on the path and he can approximate that point without an issue. So let's see. Let's do block selection and let's start our program again. We're running. We smoothly went through the wait, we're still running, trying to get home, and we are at home. So basically, this is the difference between the continuous and, uh, let's say, fine state. So whenever we will change this to a fine, motion, a fine state, regardless if it's wait or if it's regular output, the robot will have to wait in that line. And if there is any approximation, like in this point, that approximation is going to be ignored and the robot will just continue uh, waiting. So basically it will get to the point instead of uh, approximating, it's just going to get to this point the same as this point was a constant point. Then he'll stop, then he'll take a look at the logic, execute the logic and then basically continue. So it's very important guys, when you're going to in do, uh, use inputs and outputs, to remember about uh, setting up that continuous or not continuous motion. Also, uh, KUKA is very customizable robot. So in your standard, some things might be used and might not be used. But if you're working with a clear KUKA, that's the way how you can program your inputs and outputs. And that'll be all from the exercise. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video guys, like always, leave your comments down below, give it a like, subscribe, see you in the next video, bye bye!